Hello, everybody. It's been a long time since I did a live stream video, so I thought we would just get back into the habit of it. What I have pulled up here are Mark Andreessen's white pills from a thread that he posted on Twitter December 5th. And with so much going on in the world, a lot to pay attention to. Some things maybe are having you feel up, other things having you feel down. Why not go over these white pills? I thought it could be something for us to discuss, to think about, and to have us feeling better about the world for a moment. So, um, white pill number one. The hysterics have only a negative vision to sell. Narrow, pinched, sanctimonious, endlessly critical, resentful, bitter, demoralizing, depressing. You know, I've been reading uh, Hobbes' Leviathan, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Kind of the hysterics are selling us a social vision like Hobbes' vision of man in his natural state. But uh, no normal person actually wants to live like that. That is a white pill. The hysterics are selling a negative vision. No normal person wants to live like that. Normal people want to live better and have hope for the future no matter how uh, bad it seems like things are getting or have gotten. So that's white pill. White pill number two, notwithstanding all the censorship pressure campaigns, information really is more readily available today than ever before. That's true, isn't it? And it's gotten better, wouldn't you say, since Musk's Twitter takeover, uh, because now some of those censorship pressure campaigns have been lifted and information that had been suppressed is being released. So uh, is that a white pill? Let's see. Notwithstanding all the censorship pressure campaigns, information is more available today than ever before. I can imagine somebody saying, look, information is available, but what about the sense making? What about the interpretation of that information? Do we really have the meaning or do we just have the data? Well, okay, maybe there's something to that objection, but look, first step in some ways to make sure that the information is not suppressed. Then at least you have good, clean data to work with as you try to understand what it means. So yeah, that's a white pill, isn't it? Information is really more readily available today than ever before. By the way, how are you feeling about the Musk Twitter takeover as somebody who spends too much time, just enough time on Twitter, as we're doing here together, in fact? Uh, I think it's a good thing. Whoops. Scroll here. White pill number three. By the way, good to be with everybody. I know it's been way too long since I did a live stream. White pill number three. Conflict drives evolutionary improvement of ideas memes, just like life. Conflict levels, nonviolent, of course, are rising. The marketplace of ideas is strengthening, not weakening. You agree with that? The marketplace of ideas is strengthening, not weakening. I know some of you, and at times myself as well, are, how could you put it, turned off by this metaphor of the marketplace of ideas. You know, there's something too commercial about it, as though, you know, you're going to go to the marketplace to get some cheap knockoff of a great idea that really isn't for sale publicly. But okay, that's, I think, uh, not what he's talking about here. What he's talking about is that you have freer exchange here of positions, perspectives, viewpoints, worldviews, accounts, arguments, ideas, and uh, the memes are getting better. Okay, marketplace of ideas is strengthening, not weakening. Yeah, that's a white pill. So again, what are we doing? We're reading a Mark Andreessen's list of white pills from December 5th, because why not? Uh, hysterics have a negative vision to sell, but nobody wants to live like that. Information's more available. Marketplace of ideas is strengthening. Again, I think it really helped. The Musk thing helped, okay? Uh, you may have been suspicious about what effect it would have, but I think it's giving a lot of people hope that you can um, undo, undo the censorship, the repression, and the stifling of the exchange of quote-unquote ideas. White pill number four. This one I like. The truth remains the truth. You can drive out nature with a pitchfork, but she keeps coming back in. Horace. Um, this is an extremely important thought. Okay, You can drive out nature with a pitchfork, nevertheless it returns. If you follow this channel at all, if you know my work at all, you know how important to me Leo Strauss is. Elio Strauss has a book called Natural, Right, and History, all about the tendency in the history of political philosophy to push the concept of nature out of the picture, to replace it with freedom, with reason, with technology. 
to see nature as something bad that we must overcome, a tendency that leads to a kind of post-humanism or transhumanism if you push it out to its extremes. But we always have this quote to come back to. You can drive nature out with a pitchfork, nevertheless it returns. And here, Mr. Andreessen has linked the truth and nature. The truth remains the truth because the truth has something to do with nature with a capital N, okay? In other words, it's in the nature of things that they are a certain way, that they don't change, no matter what lies you tell yourself about them. That is a white pill, isn't it? White pill number five, software is really, really, really hard to outlaw. Yeah, this has to do with the relationship between technology and law, the fact that technology can outrun the law. Technology can be a step ahead of the law. And there are fascinating reflections, you may not expect to find them here, but there are fascinating reflections on the relationship between technology and law in Aristotle's politics. Because of this fact that software, let's call that technology, is hard to outlaw because technology and law operate on different principles. But here you have a white pill because software gives people access, gives them freedom, gives them creative license, and uh, much else besides. And it's hard to shut those creative potentials down by law. All right, continuing with our white pills. It's a nice way to start the week, isn't it? Why start it on doom and gloom? White pill number six, the corrupt elites are so bad, they're even bad at being elites. Well, let's call that indisputable. And uh, on one hand, you say, how is that a white pill if the corrupt elites are so bad? It means you're ruled by people who are malicious, incompetent, dangerous, and uh, bad. But here is the white pill part of the equation. They're bad at being elites. Okay, I don't know. What do you think about that? Uh, they're in power, so in that sense, they must know what they're doing in the sense of having been able to take power. So I would like to see the uncorrupt elites be so good that they can actually take power. But okay, that's a white pill. What do we have here? Arbitrage means that the payoff from actual merit and competence is rising fast. Oh yeah, I hope that excites some of you. The payoff from actual merit and competence is rising fast. Are we seeing the end of the grievance industry? Are we seeing the end of people getting ahead who sh should be behind and um, no longer suppressing the competent uh, in the name of equity and all the rest of it? Not that there's anything wrong with equity, okay? There are senses in which equity is great, but the idea that you should have finally returns from actual merit and competence uh, in an environment that had been trying to stifle them, that's a white pill, that's good. Um, Work hard, be an expert, and you'll get the payoff. White pill number eight, capitalism absorbs dissent and sells it back to us as a luxury consumer good. I don't know, it doesn't strike me as a white pill. The Zizek in me resonates with this sentence as something that is more of a critique of capitalism than a um, praise of it, I suppose. What do you think? In what sense is this a white pill? Capitalism absorbs dissent. So don't worry about dissent. Your dissent will be absorbed by capitalism and sold back to you as a luxury consumer good. Okay, probably true, pretty funny, not sure it's a white pill. Let's keep going. White pill number nine. Well, okay, I guess this is a white pill in the sense that if you think that capitalism is the ultimate good, if you think that a free market and the, ab the ability to create something and get rich off of it is the ultimate good, or at any rate, if you think capitalism is better than the dissent against it, then it's nice to know that capitalism can do this, absorb dissent, sell it back as a uh, $5,000 gold-plated Che Guevara shirt or whatever, AOC shirt. White pill number nine, the public's confidence in incumbent American institutions is converging on the truth. Huh, what do we have here? Change in Americans' confidence in major U.S. institutions, 2021 to 2022. So do people have confidence or no confidence in them? Wait, what's he posting here? The public's confidence in incumbent American institutions is converging on the truth. Incumbent institutions, in other words, people are losing confidence in institutions that don't deserve their confidence. So the American people have a high degree of confidence in small business, the military. Then by the time you get down to the police, you're at 50%. And when you're down to newspapers, uh, Congress, TV, and so on, people don't trust it at all. And Mr. M Mr. Andreessen is saying, that's a white pill. The public's confidence in incumbent American institutions is converging on the truth. The American people know that these institutions are rotten and corrupt, and they are ready, as you remember white pill number one, they want a normal life. They don't want to be ruled by the corrupt and incompetent. So that's uh, that's good. If people's faith in Congress and newspapers was as, as, a, as 
high as 100%, that would be suspicious and that would probably not be a white pill. Hello everybody, by the way, good to be with you. I'll pop over to the chat in a minute. Let's just keep going through these white pills. Get us a nice uh, Monday mood here. White pill number 10. Today's best young entrepreneurs seem much better than their predecessors from the prior 30 years. Well, that is that's that is a white pill. That's good to know. He's probably somebody who would know, uh, who's seen entrepreneurs over that period. And that's a great thing. If you're watching this and you're a young entrepreneur, you should know you seem much better than your predecessors from the prior 30 years. Take it, run with it, make the most of it. Now's your chance. White pill number 11, action causes reaction. Okay. Okay, so uh, if the elites and the corrupt uh, mismanagers are going to be dragging people through the mud, well, the people are going to want to stand up and uh, shake it off. So that's a white pill. White pill number 12, the worse, the better. Lenin, come on, is he playing with us here? Doesn't strike you as too much of a white pill, does it? Unless, well, I'll let you decide. I wouldn't put it at the top of the list, but neither did he. Number 12. White pill number 13. In this version of 1984, the telescreens broadcast both ways. Well, that's true, isn't it? We can see more and more now how the sausage is made uh, and all the rest of it, especially with Musk's Twitter takeover, which has been very positive, I think, if you're somebody roughly on the right, more on the right than on the left, who is very online or who spends some time on Twitter. Every day, two lists get longer. The things you believe but can't say. Oh, that's, I'll tell you a story about that in a second. And the things you don't believe but must say. Uh, two lists get longer. The things you believe but can't say, things you have to be quiet about. And the things you don't believe but must say, the sort of uh, pieties or orthodoxies or dogmatisms that you're required to mouth. Why is that a white pill? I think it's a white pill because... That can only get so long before it breaks. You know, that's an unbearable tension for people to have to be quiet about what they want to say and to have to say things that they don't believe. That can't last forever. So if those two lists are getting longer, then there must come a point where uh, you get this reaction. Okay, reaction. But on the face of it, that would seem like bad news rather than good news that these two lists are getting longer. The things you believe but can't say, the things you don't believe but must say. What I wanted to tell you, I wrote an article about this a long time ago called Why Students Are Terrified to Speak Their Minds on a Psychology Today blog. And I had, a, when I was a teaching assistant at the University of Toronto, I had a group of students. Uh, you read the story, I guess I'll post it in the link or make it somehow available to you. But all of the students in the class admitted that there was something they wanted to say, but were too afraid to say because they didn't want to get into trouble. Okay, this was at the University of Toronto, Canada's top university. Uh, Paul 101, so political science, students who might go on in positions of government and politics, journalism, and all of that. And they all said, I mean, I asked them a question. They all raised their hands for the first time in my life. The whole class raised its hands. They all raised their hands to acknowledge that they really wanted to be in the discussion that I was setting up, but were suppressing themselves for fear of getting in trouble for saying something politically incorrect. That was an amazing experience. So that's things that they believed but couldn't say. Okay, terrifying that students would feel like they have to shut up rather than openly discuss what they actually consider important. Anyway, white pill 15, let's keep going. Uh, by the way, I see some people in chat. Hello, hello, hello. Nice to be with you. Where are we here? Night, white pill 15, right? Ah, give me a second, guys. I clicked off the screen. Here we go. They lie to us. We know they're lying. Well, they lie to us? Yes. We know they're lying? Yes. They know we know they're lying? Yes. But they keep lying to us? Yes. And we keep pretending to believe them? Yes, but they're still lying? Yes. Why is that a white pill? Some of these I have to tell you. I ask myself, why is it a white pill? And I'm not totally sure because it seems like they're lying. We know they're lying. They keep lying. We keep pretending to believe. That's not much of a white pill, is it? The white pill would be we no longer pretend to believe and they stop lying. Right? White pill 16. In this house, we believe I, the green grocer XY, live here. I know what I must do. I believe in the manner expected of me. I can be depended upon. I'm above reproach. I'm obedient and therefore have earned the right to be left in peace. Probably a meme that I'm unfamiliar with here in some way. Whatever, you can comment on that if you want. White pill 17. Social media is an x ray machine. 
that shows us what our authority figures are actually like. Well, isn't that the truth? And boy, are we learning a lot. Oh yeah, I think there's been a big reshuffling of, uh, of status, dignity, honor, respect, a perceived merit, and much else besides as a function of social media x-ray machine. That is a white pill. Standing up and speaking the truth feels great. White pill 18, there you go. White pill 19, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts stupidly and obviously. So you can see the stupid and obvious corruption of people with absolute power, and that's a white pill because when it's obvious, you can do something about it. It's no longer insidious when it's obvious. By the way, I was thinking about this the other day, and I doubt I'm the first person ever to have said it. I know I'm not the first person ever to have said it. But powerlessness also corrupts, and absolute powerlessness also corrupts absolutely. Okay, Because when you're powerless, you start to feel like you can't do anything, you start to feel like you have no say, no effect, no influence, and powerlessness corrupts in some sense just as much as power does. And uh, it becomes a question, can you avoid the dynamics of power versus powerlessness and just get off that, get off that spectrum onto some other one? But anyways, that's a white pill because obvious power becomes less, uh, obvious corruption is less insidious, maybe. White pill number 20. Thanks, Krasen Stein and everybody else uh, in the chat for being here. White pill number 20. Sometimes it takes only a single person to change the course of history. That is a white pill. You know, some people have been taught that only large social forces that are out of our control, only um, structures that precede us by centuries. And, you know, they give you a sense that you can't really do anything to, quote unquote, change the course of history. Uh, although the Straussian in me says you don't always have to think here in terms of history, changing the course of history. You just think about think about doing the right thing under the circumstances. Think about understanding the balance of powers and tipping the scale more to the good than to the bad. But whatever. Sometimes it takes only a single person to change the course of history. You're not powerless. Uh, so there you go. White pill 21. Spring is here. Pff, in Montreal it isn't. Okay, exact opposite. But metaphorically, uh, maybe. White pill 22, the true, the beautiful, and the good are still the true, the beautiful, and the good. And everyone knows what is true, beautiful, and good, whether they'll admit it or not. What do you think about that? If we take this, the true, the beautiful, and the good are still the true, the beautiful, and the good. Probably you could admit that. And everyone knows what is true, beautiful, and good, whether they'll admit it or not. No, this, the, the Socrates in me and the Socrates in you uh, we have a hard time with that, don't we? Everyone knows. No, everyone doesn't know. It's not a question of what they'll admit. You know, ignorance of the true, ignorance of the beautiful, ignorance of the good, that's something. I think that's, um, you know, maybe implicitly, potentially, in principle, people could acquaint themselves with their memory of the true, the beautiful, and the good. But I'm not sure it's a matter here of admission. Uh, it's more complicated in my view. But nevertheless, let's keep going through this list of white pills. Um, thanks for being with me again. It's been so long since I did a live stream. I needed a chance to hop on here with you, get back into the habit, get back into the mood. And I figured this was a nice, uh, nice list for us to go through. White pill number 23, we really seriously do not have to live like this. Things aren't inevitable. You can change them. You can improve them. It's always open to political prudence and political action, to social um, pressure. We don't have to live like this, okay? Implied here that you understand what this means. You understand the corruption, the incompetence, the takeover, the institutional collapse and decay. And we don't have to live like this. Change is possible. Again, if you're a Twitter type person, you can ask yourself, you know, whether Musk's Twitter takeover is an example of a successful uh, change for the better. So that was a list of Mark Andreessen's white pills in a thread from, looks like, what, December? Oh, over, over a couple of days here, okay? So a few days go by. He adds another one. It's nice to see. And uh, you should always remind yourself, even if you're somebody who thinks we're in the Kali Yuga, if we're at the whatever, okay? If you think things are worse than they've ever been and they're only going to get worse and uh, we're on the cusp of all kinds of new catastrophes, well, remind yourself, there's still something in your hands. There's still something here that we can not, like... 
uh, gloss, you know, like things are horrible, but we're going to pretend that they're good. No, there, there are some things that are genuinely good. Let me just remind you, the software being ahead of the law, the entrepreneurs being better than they've ever been. There's something to that, okay? And the fact that you can see more than you could see before about the incompetence of the elites, and therefore you can replace them, hopefully, potentially. Um, well, anyway, Mark Andreessen's list of white pills, that was great. Let me hop over into the chat for a minute. Uh, this is going to be a relatively short stream. I plan on doing way more of these guys again. I know it's been just way, way, way too long since I put out a video. I won't even give you any excuses. Is the chat queued up? Boom. Nice to see you all. Uh, let's go to the top. It seems like ideas become less and less tangible. There's a marketplace of ideas, but it's like speculation marketplace of ideas. Yeah, there, there are a lot of ideas going around uh, these days. Uh, some of them are recycled old ideas. I was just talking to someone earlier today who pointed out correctly that, you know, once again, like Dugan has taught us so many times, uh, fascism, communism, even older forms of liberalism, people are interpreting our situation in the familiar terms of the past. It's not so obvious that that's the best way to do it. Um, but there are idea entrepreneurs as well offering new interpretations, new models. And listen, if we have the opportunity to think, lately I've been reading Hobbes, Rousseau, Plato, the old thinkers who are foundational. And I strongly recommend, if you're with me and you're watching this, don't ever consider those books outdated. Read Hobbes' Leviathan and imagine it was written 2022. You'll be amazed. Okay, but there are also books that have been written this year, I'm sure, that are worth reading and studying. Uh, I'm just telling you, as far as the marketplace of ideas, look, you can still buy books and read them. Okay, you can't buy Dugan on Amazon. You can buy them on eBay. Uh, but you can buy Hobbes. Um, you go to the library, read Machiavelli, Montesquieu, Plato, Aristotle. So in that sense, ideas are available. They're accessible. And uh, thank God that's the case. Uh, many are still in the cave. Yeah, there's a nice... Um, Many are still in the cave. So I was recently asked to write something. I'm not going to tell you for the journal just because I'll post it when it comes out. But it's on this idea that Leo Strauss had of a cave beneath the cave. So I'm going to assume you have some rough sense of Plato's cave allegory from the Republic that we're all like prisoners who are chained at the bottom of a cave. We can't move our heads side to side. We can't turn around or move our bodies. All we see are the shadows cast in front of us onto a wall. We don't know that they're shadows. We treat them as if they are the things themselves. Behind us is a fire that's burning. People are casting shadows in front of that fire. And a prisoner could, in principle, be liberated, released, brought outside of the cave. It's an um, allegory, as Socrates says in the Republic, for our nature in its education and lack of education. So it's a famous image about our nature, our natural ignorance, and the possibility of philosophical assent. But Leo Strauss introduced the beautiful image. He said, there's a cave beneath the cave. We're not even the prisoners of Plato's cave. We've dug ourselves even deeper, and therefore we have to do effort just to get back to the state of our natural ignorance. And if you remember that white pill that said, you can expel nature with a pitchfork, nevertheless it returns, that's like saying you can dig, 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 dig in Plato's cave, dig yourself a second cave, try to get away from your natural chains, uh, but nevertheless eventually you get snapped back, and that makes possible the good old-fashioned platonic ascent. Uh, okay, it's going to be a nice article. I hope you like it when it comes out. Uh, Canadian winters. Yes, I can actually uh, white pill you on the Canadian winters. I am not a fan of winter. I don't like the cold. I don't like the snow. And now that I live in Montreal, it's quite cold, more so than in Toronto, more snow and colder weather. But I've learned to like it. The city's beautiful in the winter. You can snow, you can snowboard, you can take your kids out for a, a skate, ice skating. Uh, snowball fights, uh, snow angels, and all the rest of it. So you just make the best of it. Hot chocolate and a warm fire. Uh, what's my number one white pill? Sam Schneider asks. Well, that's a good question. I don't have a number one. Like, there's so many things that I think you can be hopeful and positive about. Okay, so I have, I have kids. I love my kids. I love to see them. I love to see them smiling, playing, growing, developing. And I see a bright future for them. I think that the... Technological developments on the software side, like um, Mr. Andreessen said, and that actually does improve people's lives. I'm not a techno futurist. I'm not a post humanist, as you know, needless to say. But I think developments in technology that help us live uh, well, that help us to overcome problems that we need not have, uh, that's a white pill for sure. 
I'm hopeful about the future. I think the fact that we have the great books, something that needless to say is extremely important for me. You can, you're not lost. You can take Plato. You can take like someone wrote here, Alan Bloom's closing of the American mind. You can take Hobbes. You can take some brilliant book, read it, learn it, understand more about yourself in the world, operate more fluently, competently, uh, expertly in the world. You can, I mean, we have access to that as much as we talk about censorship and persecution and uh, all those kinds of things, cancel culture, you can still go read the most insightful commentaries on political life that have ever been written and come out of that with a better understanding of who you are, where you've been, where you're going. And that's not to mention all of these other white pills. Like I'll give you another one. This is minor. You're going to have your own version of it. I, for my whole life, have derived enjoyment from playing music. Piano, guitar, drums, software, synths, okay, composition. Music software is incredible. Music hardware has become really inexpensive. My understanding is you used to have to pay several thousands of dollars for a synthesizer that you could get today in a smaller, more convenient, more feature-packed form for much less. So there are a lot of things that you can be helpful, uh, hopeful about, and you need not consider the end of the world. And there are problems to overcome. And thankfully, a lot of intelligent, energetic uh, young people and old people who can overcome those problems together, God willing. Okay, so I don't think there's a need to have a black pill. Things, it's not like destruction is um, in- inevitable. Things aren't always as bad as they seem and all of that. Hello from Northern Quebec. Hello, minus 18. Tell us uh, something about how cold it is here. Uh, okay, everybody. Thank you for... Being here, I hope you enjoyed those white pills. I plan to do more of these live streams. It's been way too long, like I said. If you don't already know that I have courses at millermanschool.com, please go have a look. And um, take care until I see you again. Thanks. Goodbye.